Inc. here on Cigar Box Nation TV. Uh, Shane Spiel and I have been featuring dulcimers. We have created a... Uh, what's the matter? Everything all right? Everything's all right. Uh, we've created a, a playlist on the Cigar Box Nation YouTube channel. Uh, we posted links here on the Facebook page for that. So you can go and you can see some of the coolest and most interesting, the wildest and wackiest dulcimer playing, dulcimer creations that have been made over the years. I have a dulcimer hybrid here. This is the one that I was playing Tuesday when we did that episode. Uh, it's basically a, what's called a stick dulcimer. Um, there's a trademarked version of this by McNally. Uh, Bob McNally has the strum stick, which kind of made this pop, this style popular. <coughs> so this is Cigar Box Nation TV. I'm Ben Giddy Baker. And today, in addition to dulcimers, we're going to be talking about bowing. Bowing instruments. I've got a whole range of crazy stuff up here. Some of which was meant to be bowed. Some of which was never meant to be bowed and some of which wasn't even meant to make sound at all. So there's going to be a mix today of music, of sound, <laughs> of uh, all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to open with a song. I think I need to get my uh, shirt sleeve pulled up for this. This is one written by our good friend A.J. Gaither, one of my favorites of his. He's an original singer, songwriter. He does all original music at his shows. And this is one he wrote about what got him in, or his one of his first times performing, what kind of helped him catch the bug of making music. So AJ, he's out there, I think down in Lake of the Ozarks in Arkansas or somewhere this week, sending this one out to you. And again, this is a diatonically fretted instrument, so uh, it takes a little getting used to compared to a, a chromatic cigar box guitar. down I-70, all guitars in the truck. We'd had high hopes, but I knew we was out of luck. When we turned on the exit to take us to the show, said, come on boys, it's almost time to go. Yeah, we went to the barbecue, the smoke, it filled the air. Went up with the meatheads, they said, set up over there. We dropped our gear and I tuned up my string. sending that out to A.J. Gaither, wherever he might be today. And again, this is a three-string uh, stick dulcimer uh, tuned to somewhere in the range of open F, F sharp, somewhere in there. I don't know. But, uh, you can do the same thing on an instrument tuned GDG, open G. And this is a homemade, uh, handmade kazoo that we made here in the Giddy Shop a while back. It, uh, I don't know. I don't know if we need a close-up on it or not. I discovered when 
I got into kazoo making. Shane Spiel got me into it a couple of years ago. I discovered it's very hard to make a wooden kazoo that doesn't look like a piece of drug paraphernalia. So, uh... <laughs> All right. So, bowing. We're going to be doing a lot of bowing today. Uh, I'm going to start by bowing a dulcimer because this is dulcimer week here on Cigar Box Nation TV. And I happen to have an hourglass style mountain dulcimer here. Now, if you go on YouTube, we posted a couple of a couple of videos off of YouTube of people playing these with bows. This is not a new thing. We didn't invent this. Um, some of them hold it like this, and some place it on a table like that. So I've been practicing a little bit. I can tell you this, this is hard to do. So using a bow, why would you use a bow? Why do people use bows on instruments? Um, of course, they're usually used on violins. I'll get the fiddle out here in a minute. Um, and cellos and, and uh, upright basses and things like that. When you take a bow to an instrument that wasn't ever really made to be bowed, you get a little bit different sound because what the bow is doing, you know, when you pluck a string, it has the initial attack and then it fades off as the vibrations subside. With a bow, you're keeping that string under pretty much constant vibration. And that gets the body of the instrument into a state of constant vibration. If you've got an instrument under a lot of tension, like a little violin there, it can make a lot of sound for a small instrument. Sometimes way more sound than you want. So, the Bode Mountain Dulcimer. Ooh, that's good right there. You can tell it takes a lot of practice to make something like this sound good, and I have not done a lot of practicing. Um, let me grab my rosin cake. Rosin is what you put on a bow. Try to do this right. Oh boy, here we go. See what happens. This is mostly unscripted here today. I decided I'm just going to wing it, make it up as I go. So this is rosin. It's a sticky, I don't know if it's made from sap or something with a little wax added. And you get that on your bow. And basically it helps it grip the strings. Now, I don't want to give the impression that I'm some kind of expert on any of this, because I'm not. I haven't done a lot of bowed instrument playing in my life. I've never been able to really make them sound that good, but that's all right. can still have fun with it. So this time holding it on my lap, or if you had it sitting on a tabletop, now I'm actually fretting the bass string here instead of the uh, the dual melody strings. Let's see if I can get it going. I tell you, this is hard to make sound good. Ooh, that's bad. All right, so dulcimer week. There's the bow dulcimer. I'm not going to subject you to much more of that. Um, so the next thing I wanted to uh, just want to apologize to oh. everyone. The, the cameras that we usually use for alternate uh, uh, shots aren't quite syncing right, so that's why you don't see any of the great shots. Oh, all right. Well, we can that. move the main one around. Yeah. It's all good. Or I'll come forward, trip over the microphone. It'll be great. <laughs> um, we're going to bring in a clip now that is from a couple of years ago, actually. I went down to York, Pennsylvania, where Shane Spiel lives, and we took a little side trip over to an industrial museum there in York and discovered something really cool. Speaking of bowed instruments, this is like the king monster thing of all bowed instruments. It's called a horse fiddle. And we're gonna show you this clip. We hope the, the audio comes through good on it. We've been working hard to get this right. So Nick, go ahead and bring that in. All right. The horse fiddle. There in the museum. What is this? You said this is a musical instrument. Yeah, this is uh, what we believe uh, a horse fiddle. Okay, a horse fiddle. Yes. Sir. This big box here. Yeah, a horse fiddle with a very long bow. Ben, let's 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 get this bow. Check this out. 
The world's biggest violin bow. <laughs> What's a horse metal do? Why is it made? What, what's the story? So the, the easy answer is that the horse fiddle was made to make really loud noise. Uh, the thought is that this goes back to a, a medieval tradition on a wedding night. Um, usually guests of a party would go to the, uh, the newly wedded couple's house. The shivery. Shivery. would make some noise, uh, use something like this to kind of disturb them. And the idea was that they would come out, thank their guests, offer them a drink, and then they go on their merry way. There's, there's, a, there's a thing about shiveries. Now, like he said, someone will get married, and they'd have the reception and celebration, and then they'd go home to their newlywed house. And as soon as they would blow out the last candle, everybody from town would sneak up in front of their house and use clangers and different things to, you know, get them back out of bed and come out and give drinks or, or candy. Now, this is a shivery instrument. Yeah, that's what we believe it to be. It's uh, basically a, a wooden box. Uh, looks like it was pieced together from wooden crates. Okay. And on the inside, uh, there's metal wire that's strung across yeah, either side. And then it looks like some uh, spare metal uh, plates, gears, perhaps. So those are old. Would hang those down are, from a plow. Yeah, those are old plow discs. They would hang down and then uh, rattle around, make some noise. Okay. And uh, the shape of this, when the bow is pulled, yeah, across, okay, really give you a nice loud noise as well. So this is rosin. Uh, so if you think of a pitcher in baseball, rosin. So they would actually rosin up the bow yeah, for this so thing. That came from uh, we have a Lewis Miller sketch that actually depicts something very similar to this. But it looks like if you put some rosin on there, it helps with the sliding motion a little bit, <laughs> uh, just to make it a little bit easier for you. So. Now this is a violin bow in a way. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and how does it work? We gotta do this. So basically, two people on either side. Okay, Ben, you get over there. All right. Are you ready for this? Which way are we going? For the this? horse fiddle will go towards me first. You ready? Go faster? Yes! This is the type of instrument I'm searching for in life. Things that are forgotten I'm, I'm, about. I'm taking measurements in my mind. because Oh no, Ben's going to build one now. Watch out. The construction here, it's it's round head nails now, but you can see where the square nails used to be. Yep. So it was reconstructed, it was Refined. fixed. It yeah, but look fixed. how thought out it is. It took them hours to put this together. This wasn't just and thrown together in 10 minutes. These were put through and then twisted. Put through and twisted. And put the whole thing under tension because wood under tension will ring more than. And notice they chopped out the wood because they found out it wasn't vibrating enough. Too thick. It, it was too thick, so they they chopped it out here. And probably without some sort of brace there, this top piece will break and crack and spill. Oh, this is with more clanging bits. Yeah, we need more clanging bits. And you know what I think it needs? An electric pickup. <laughs> an, array, an array of piezoelectric pickups all around the base. With a big amplifier beside it. <laughs> that is a perfect example of people making, I'll say sound, not necessarily music, but sound from, from nothing. I have never heard of a horse fiddle before in my life. This is amazing. is an instrument that was meant to be bowed that thing that you just saw in that video the horse fiddle that was a different sound altogether now i have a hard time making a violin sound good that thing was never meant to sound good it was meant to make noise and a lot of it and it did a very good job of that so i hope you enjoyed that little clip there from a, a little fun adventure shane and i had a couple years back i know we had fun with it all right, so bowing instruments. Of course, some of the instruments like that violin was meant to be bowed, but we don't stop there. That's no fun. We got to get 
all sorts of stuff that was never meant to be both. We've got a ride cymbal, a 21 inch, 22 inch ride cymbal that Dale has let us use for the day. And I'm gonna get that bowed. We've got an old uh, vaudeville style fiddle. They used to call them, uh, they used to call them Jap fiddles. Um, I'm not sure if that term is still uh, appropriate, but uh, it's a one string. This is an antique one that Shane convinced me to buy off of eBay. So I'm gonna be playing that a little bit. I've got the up upright uh, wash tub gut bucket base that we made the other week on an earlier broadcast. I'm going to bow that. We've got the two string upright base. Going to bow that and then things are going to get a little wacky. If you can believe that. I've got a banjo. <laughs> an instrument that was clearly never meant to be bowed. These things are bloody awful enough on their own. I'm going to take a bow to it and then things really get weird. I have in addition to the symbol, which we'll probably end on, I have a metal trash can lid. A galvanized tin bucket trash can lid. I'm gonna take a bow to that. I've got an old wood crosscut saw here. I'm gonna take a bow to that. Now, of course, that has some precedent. Uh, musical saws are a thing, have been a thing for a long time, and they generally are bowed. Um, this is not a musical saw. Musical saws are specially made to be nice and thin and tuned and resonant. This is an actual saw from my grandpa's garage that I brought up here. And you can see he tried to sell this one in a yard sale. And it still got a $5 price tag on it. It didn't sell. I'm pretty glad about that. This one, it's a little thicker than you would generally, generally want for a musical saw. But let me tell you, it makes sound. I'm not going to say it makes music, <laughs> but it makes sound. And we've got a couple of other things back here that I'm just going to surprise you with. Um, and something that surprised me, I discovered this right before the broadcast. I've got a three-string, unfretted cigar box guitar here that, that Glenn Watt built. Those marks on the neck, those are, are slots with wood filler in them to mark out where the frets would be. This is an unfretted instrument. I've got it through the amp over here. I'm going to take a bow to this, and I was surprised by the sound. I hope you will be too. Um, so I don't know. What, what first here? I think the uh, vaudeville fiddle, the antique vaudeville fiddle here. Now, I cheated a little bit and made some pencil marks on the side to help me find the notes. So let's see what I can work out here. Uh, I think Ludwig would be proud. Oh yeah, there it is, there it is. <laughs> All right, there you go. The antique vaudeville fiddle. Now, if you watch some old uh, old vaudeville clips, they got them on YouTube. Uh, Shane has posted them before. It was, uh, well, who was it? Uh, W.C. Fields. Uh, somebody w was famous. He would play one of these. It was a comedic act. Shane will tell you who it was. Often they would have them on a, on a post here, so it was just at the right height for playing or holding between their knees. Was like it Larry from the Three Stooges? I, he got started on a one-string fiddle. That's right. Is that what Shane said? Yeah. Well, he, See, he Shane, it right before, and then you start launching to that. You guys might have picked up on this by now. Shane is a walking encyclopedia of music history, of handmade musical instrument history. He has been researching this stuff for over 20 years, and he's got a library full of it. So any... <laughs> Oh, yeah, just the library's full of it. Um, so anytime I have a question about something like that, Shane is my go-to guy. Uh, so that's the antique vaudeville fiddle. Now, uh, before we start venturing too far afield here, I'm going to get this cigar box guitar out. I was trying to find a clip from a couple of years, several years ago now, five, boy, I don't even know how long it's been, six years. Uh, a guy had a, a get-together down in Pennsylvania, not far from York. Uh, Ted Crocker had a little get-together there at a state park. And Randy Bretz and uh, Steve Dom were there. He went by the name of Bones at the time. And Randy and Steve had a bowing session on a couple of cello-scale instruments that I think Randy had built. 
and it was just this ethereal sort of new age hearts of space thing and i wish i could find the clip because it was really awesome so i've got this through the amp with a, a little bit of effects there and i'm just kind of gently bowing that this is tuned to open g song I got my cord cutting out a little bit here that's a song kind of made famous by the movie the Titanic it was famous before that but one instrument never really meant to be bowed the three string open G cigar box guitar but I know I don't do it full justice but when I first heard that sound through that little lamp over there I was like you know that's kind of nice so I hope you enjoyed that again I am not an expert bowed instrument player I'm just here having fun showing you some of the stuff that you can do with some some wacky uh, things just having fun unscripted so nothing heavy that's what I say all right I think it's time for the banjo now this is the Irish tenor scale banjo that Farley, Farley and Dale built out on the shop in the shop here at CB Giddy. And usually I play it with a pick. This sounds pretty good, but I decided, well, why not take a bow to it? Now I can't quite get a grip on it like this, so what else are you gonna do with a bowed instrument? Tuck it there under your chin like so. All right, are you ready? Are we in tune? Now, coincidentally, with this tuning, it's tuned an octave or two lower than the violin, so. today did you think you would see a bowed banjo i know well i kind of did but i had a tip off so there you go bowing a banjo sounds actually i think it sounds pretty good considering can't really get a grip on it kind of an interesting sound there doesn't it banjo what else do we got here got the big upright bass i know we showed this off a couple of weeks or a few weeks ago now we've been doing these broadcasts for uh for a couple of months and uh waiting on my cameraman here to adjust the camera for me nothing heavy I'm gonna give this big bass a try here now for this i've got a little bit different bow i've been using violin bows which are a thinner the horsehair on them there is a thinner uh strip the bass bow is a thicker, heavier sort of deal with a wider strip of horsehair, and that gives you more surface area that interacts with what you're playing. So for bigger instruments or instruments that are a little harder to get vibrating, the bass bow comes into play. I'll be using the bass bow for the rest of all of these, I think, the things that were never meant to be bowed. All right, so the two-string bass, hopefully the audio for this comes through all right. It's pretty low.
Let it be said that if you need somebody to butcher Twinkle Twinkle Little Star on the upright two-string bass, I'm your guy. <laughs> That's all right. We're just having fun here today. Let me get my trash can lid out of the way. Now, if you thought that was horrible, wait till you see what I've got next. This is the gut bucket, the, uh, the upright base that we built out in the Giddy Shop for an earlier episode on wash tub bases. And if you remember that one, if you were with us and you saw it, I'm losing stuff all over the place here. This is how they're meant to be played. You're changing the, the pitch by moving the stick. It's moving the can top, all sorts of crazy stuff going on. Um, and actually, just a side note, uh, on that song I did earlier, the A.J. Gaither song, Last Free Exit, he's actually talking in that song about playing a one-string upright bass. Uh, he, he, in addition to his solo act, he takes part in a bluegrass band, and they used to, he used to be the bass player. So, so now we're going to take the bass bow to this, and i got to hold this down so it doesn't take off on me. the note right there. I think my knot's coming undone up here at the top. It keeps slipping. You know, this is Cigar Box Nation TV. This is do it yourself with no script. Just get out there and give it a try. We take the same approach when doing these episodes as a lot of folks do with building homemade instruments and cigar box guitars. You might not know what you're doing. You might not be sure if it's going to be any darn good but you just do it anyway, you try to have fun. This whole thing might implode on me. That bottom isn't very strong. At least we'll get it on video. Yeah, at least it's live. <laughs> Is this live? We'll come in again, don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll take all we'll that we'll out. We'll fix it in post. We'll take so all that out in post, no <laughs> problem. All right, here we go. See if I can find Twinkle Twinkle on this. It starts off hot. I feel like a cameraman for National Geographic today. I think that's quite enough of that. So that's bowing the one string gut bucket base with mixed results. I think it's safe to say those results were mixed. All right, so enough of this sitting around doing boring stuff. I'm gonna get my three string cigar box guitar out of the way. That's the thing about using heavy reverb folks and, and delay and whatnot. If you hit a wrong note, <laughs> That note sticks around for several several seconds, so that's always fun. All right, I did the banjo. I did that, I did all that. Okay, what do we got? I think we're gonna pull out now, I might need my chair back, um, the trash can lid. Now this is an actual trash can lid from Lowe's. We made a, uh, a different style gut bucket out of the rest of it, and this is just the leftover uh, lid. So I put a little rosin on there. Now again, this is not music, <laughs> this is sound. And by applying the bow in different ways and different pressures and different angles, you can you actually can get different notes. You can get a very low, that's that high note. Once it gets started, ooh, that's a good one right there. Those high screeches. Hope nobody has their computer speakers up too loud. <laughs> Should have known better on an episode like this. Oh, that's good right there. Nick, Nick back there, if you could see his face. He doesn't do well with uh, 
fingernails on chalkboard sounds, so he's suffering today, let me tell you. All right, trash can lid, that's enough of that. <laughs> the metal dust pan. I saw this leaning against the wall out there. I had to, I had to wrestle Noel for it. And that didn't go well. So something clearly never meant to make music uh, or sound, for that matter. And you might, as we approach the symbol. You might start hearing something that sounds like something you've heard maybe in horror movies or something. Soundtracks. The use of the bow on various things has a long history in the art of Foley, which is basically movie and stage sound effects. Shane, just a shout out. We might not do the water today. It'd be a little bit messy. They want you to put water in the... Uh trash can lid and play it upside down. Oh, yeah, yeah. great idea. It's Shane. a good idea, but... Shane will be doing that on his show tomorrow. <laughs> Don't worry, folks. Just up the ante. Fill the trash can lid with beer and drink it while you're bowing it. How about that, Shane Spiel? All right. That would be a beer phone. All right. The metal dustpan. Okay, I think we're around. I'm gonna do the saw, show, <laughs> subject you to that, and then we're gonna finish with the symbol. Now, I'll take a little break from the Boeing just for a minute to talk about something we just got listed yesterday. These just came out. We've got two how to play cigar box guitar books written by Brent Robitaille, Robitaille um, published by Kalimi Publishing. Uh, he did one for the four-string, tuned G, D, G, B, which is kind of a, a standard four-string tuning. And then the three-string, which is G, D, G, open G, what we all, uh, not all of us, but what a lot of us uh, have and are learning. He's got 30 songs in here. There's O Susanna that I was doing on the fiddle earlier. House of the Rising Sun, Be Thou My Vision, Fur Lee, St. Louis Blues. It ranges from traditional folk music, mountain music, uh, some blues, some... A little bit of classical in there. He's got the blues scales and the major and minor scales, um, which I tell you, I need to spend a little more time learning, especially the, the G blues scale and some of those other things. Uh, he's got chord forms in here, uh, riffs, picking exercises. It's like a, a standard how to learn to play guitar book that you might find by Mel Bay or something. But this one is specific to the three string cigar box guitar. So, and this one to the four string. So they're on CB Giddy, get on there, check them out. And as you know, anytime you buy something from CB Giddy, not to wax on too long here, but uh, we put a lot of that back into promoting cigar box guitars and to promoting the, the movement worldwide of reaching new people, not just to sell them parts, not just to grow the business. Because I know that as the movement grows worldwide, the business will grow along with it. So I reinvest, I sponsor festivals, we, we sponsor musicians out there, we do all kinds of stuff. You might be able to find some things a little cheaper elsewhere, but you know that when you buy from us, uh, we're reinvesting in the movement. So that's that. What was I gonna do? The saw. Any uh, any questions or other comments from the peanut no gallery? No questions, but Charles, you got a good point, saying that you'd have to be desperate to play a dust band. You, you know, one of the reasons I pulled all this stuff up here today, if you get on YouTube, if you read the histories, it goes back thousands of years. People finding a way to make music, to, to let the music that's inside of them out. Whether it's Ed Stilley down in the hills of Arkansas making crazy guitars with saw blades and dust pans inside of them. Or back to the first, uh, first native however long ago who stretched a vine over a hollow log and gave it a plunk people have been finding ways to let the music out of them we've even posted the video on the the cigar box nation page here on facebook of the uh the old clips from hee haw of the two guys e efing and hambone and the one guy's doing a, a primitive form of beatbox with his mouth and the other guy's just slapping his leg to a rhythm no instruments at all. People find a way to let their music out. Sometimes it sounds like horrible screeching, like that garbage can lid, and the saw is about to. And other times it sounds better. What do we got, Nick? Uh, just a clarification, Greg. 
Nevels wants to know if the books have tablature in them. Oh, oh yeah, they do. Absolutely. Uh, all of each book has thirty songs. I, it might be the same thirty songs, one arranged for three string, one for four, and they've got the notes, you know, like traditional musical notation, and they've got the tablature for the three string cigar box guitar and the four string. So it shows you exactly where to put your fingers. Um, I'm actually, I, I'm trying to work up a, a review, a more in-depth review of them and kind of a how to use them broadcast that I hope to be able to do on the CB Giddy page here on Facebook. Uh, I don't know if it'll be today, but soon. So yes, definitely has tablature. Now I've discovered on this saw, and again, this saw was never meant to be used as a musical saw, that if I bow it in different places, I can get different pitches. Now I haven't been able to piece those pitches together into a tune yet. But if I bow here, I get that. Now you know when when they if you've ever seen a musical saw really being played, they're bending it and contorting it and twisting it while they bow to get the sounds they want. This one isn't really uh, flexible enough for that, and I'm tearing the heck out of my shoe sole here because this is a real saw. <laughs> And the people who can really play them get that kind of wavery, singy sound that I was just getting a hint of there. So this is an instrument, or this is an object, I don't know if I can even call it an instrument. It isn't hard to get sound out of it, but rather difficult to actually make music with it. But it's fun to play around with. When I first started, when I first grabbed this saw off the shelf out there in the Giddy Shop, I'm not bowing away on it, nothing's happening. I'm like, ah, oh, this doesn't even work. But then I sanded this top edge a little bit with some fine sandpaper, polished it up, applied some rosin, and then through a little bit of patience, it started, I, I started finding how to coax those sounds out of it. I almost had the first three notes of Twinkle Twinkle there. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. All right, that's enough of the saw. So, bowing a wood crosscut saw. I think that's a crosscut saw. I'm not even sure. All right, enough of this. Bring the camera up, Nick. We're heading to the symbol now. Now this this is a not a cheap symbol. This is a Sabian hand hammered. Dale, being a drummer, has all sorts of high end stuff up there. So I asked him, Dale, can you bring down some symbols? You know, I want to try them out. Oh yeah, man. Brings them down. I'm going away. Different sizes, different things. And I'm like, yeah, how much does one of these go for? You know, I was thinking $30, $40. But I don't know anything about drumming. It's like, oh, yeah, that one there is probably $350, $400. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Now, Shane Spiel has told me, and he's probably telling you at the moment, that he has heard or found that actually some of the cheaper symbols the ones that aren't hand hammered, hand turned, like they're just stamped out of brass. Sometimes out of those, you can get even crazier sounds when you bow them than you can out of these fine, because these are all handmade, hand hammered. It's it's really a thing. So Charles brings up a good point. That you it's got upside Charles. down. It is upside down. We tried it both ways. Uh, in the traditional way, with it kind of sloping down, it was harder for me to get the angle that I've discovered that you need to really get the sounds out of it. So we flipped it around and we've got some other sizes, they're all out there. Because Dale told us that when it comes to symbols, sometimes you can stack them, put one face down over the other, but we don't want to get too carried away today. Now I found with this that if you gently Well, it's coming through. I'm going to bring the mic over because I really want this to. All right, hopefully, it won't overpower. Keep an eye on the audio level there, Nick. 
because you can bring out this super low note it's almost right on the edge of what humans can hear and if you try to bow too hard or too fast you lose that low because it's gonna get loud. Get a little more rosin on here. Now this is what's called a ride cymbal. It's made to kind of build and ride and, and create crashing crescendos and things like that. And I don't know how to do any of that, so. Now bowed cymbals, definitely have history in sound effects in movies. So you can get those deeper, longer notes, with kind of slow. And then if you come straight down, you get those gong-like crashes. Kind of build. <laughs> well, there you go, the bowed symbol. I'm obviously not a, a master at it by any stretch of the uh, imagination but uh, it's kind of fun to mess around with and uh, if you have an old symbol uh, any old symbols an old drum set i got all of these bows and things off of ebay i think i paid 28 bucks or something for the bass bow which for bowing non-standard things i found to be the most uh versatile and then the violin bows came with this violin this little cheapo violin i think i paid 80 bucks for that on ebay now i want a cigar box fiddle and I know we could build one here. I'm actually talking to Jim Morris about whether I can trade him for that one he built. If you haven't seen it, speaking of bowed instruments, uh, Jim Morris is a Cigar Box Nation member. I don't think he's on Facebook, but he's been a, a member on the Nation for a long time. And any time we throw out a challenge of any sort, you know, the Gus Cannon banjo, the Uncle Enos banjo, anything we throw out there, it seems like about eight hours later, <laughs> Jim Morris is, oh, here's a video. And here's me playing the heck out of it, you know. He, not, not that he's immodest in any way, but uh, he built a cigar box fiddle just a week or two ago to some plans from 1940, a 1940 magazine, Popular Home Craft. And it, he plays Turkey in the Straw on it, and it's just awesome, like almost like pretty much everything he does. So anyway, that's the Boeing episode. I'm going to re recap some things. It's Dalsimer Week here on Cigar Box Nation TV, and that is part of Americana Month. The whole month of July, we've been talking about some of the different instruments, some of the, the broader uh, picture of instruments beyond cigar box guitars, talking about the one-string fiddles and the dulcimers, the mountain dulcimers and the, the mountain banjos, and some of the other things that people have made, instruments they have crafted. They couldn't afford conventional instruments, so they made their own and the music came out and that music that they made especially in the Appalachian region of the United States had a deep impact not only on mountain music and old time music but on bluegrass and that flowed down into country so as we've said before you know we you, we often focus a lot on the blues and the role that diddly bows and cigar box guitars had on the blues well we decided for July to expand that a little bit and that's what we've been doing so dulcimer week I uh, actually got dulcimer here, or stick dulcimer, strum stick style. And I didn't practice this, but you've heard me play it before, but never with the kazoo, so. <laughs> For 
Cigar Box Nation TV, that's all we've got for you today. Shane Spee will be back with you tomorrow at noon. He'll be finishing up the Tennessee Music Box style dulcimer that he's been building from the packing crate that the banjo kit he put together last week came in. They sent it in a taped together thin plywood box. Shane said, well, I'm going to make a dulcimer out of this box. So he's going to be stringing that up and playing it for you tomorrow. We hope you enjoy these broadcasts. We sure have fun doing them every weekday at noon Eastern time here on the Cigar Box Nation page. If you haven't already, if you're watching this after the fact, somebody shared it with you, give our page a like. Sign up, click the button for the live notifications when we do these broadcasts. Because like I say, we are featuring, we always feature cool homemade instruments, history, musical performances, and we try our best to have fun doing it and help you have fun too. So that's all I've got today. Ben Giddy Baker here at the CB Giddy Juke Shack stage, signing off.